Hello, everybody. This is Danielle. I just wanted to tell you that we are starting here at Shiloh what we call vlogs. And vlogs are short um, little videos of experiences that us as pastors have or people in the congregation have um, with the Lord, what they're reading in the Word, what they are encountering in their day-to-day lives, and some things that we are processing ourselves and how we can come to you and kind of share those experiences and what we are encountering and what we're reading in the Word. And um, we just wanted you guys to be a part of that. So it's the first episode, and we plan on releasing one a month. And we hope you guys look forward to and enjoy getting um, this vlog experience. And for today, I wanted to share with you a little bit about what I have been processing is about seasons and seasons of life. And the Lord, um, I was going to get ready to prepare to release a word um, at the Women of Gateway Conference. And I had in my own personal life realized that for that conference, I felt I needed to bring something that was for me personally to them. And I just asked the Lord, I said, Lord, I am a little frustrated right now in the season of my own life. And he said, well, why don't you share that with the women of Gateway and share that with, you know, Shiloh, share that with people that you are doing life with. And so I really dug deep. I dug deep in discovering what season of life that I'm in. And I have some really fun things I think you'll really benefit from. In Texas, of course, we don't really have seasons. We have hot and hot. We don't have fall. And occasionally we have winter. And when if we have winter, it's really serious. Um, so, you know, if you think about nature, there is all the different seasons of life. And um, I appreciate the different seasons of life. And as I was doing researches, uh, researching about different seasons in people's lives, a lot of research, a lot of people have written books about the seasons of life that you're in. And they will say like, you know, maybe the spring season of your life is really from the 20 to 30 year old age. And then the summer is 30 to 40 year old age. And fall is, you know, your 50 to 60 year old. And then your winter is 60 plus. And I, I really I, I, I read that and I thought about that. No, nah, that's not really applicable. I really feel like you can have all different seasons of life, no matter what age you are. And looking at the word seasons, I really asked the Lord, it's like, Lord, what are you trying to tell me in releasing, like, for me personally to discover what season of life I'm in? And I really saw the word sea and then sun, season. So the word sea is, and I really have this picture of the sea, ebbs and flows. You can have a really calm sea, or you can have a really tumultuous sea, or you can have a kind of an in-between, you know? Um, and so really, you can have the, the your life, it can be like a sea, but it's always under the covering of the sun, S-O-N or S-U-N. And I love the fact that when I think about that and ponder the different seasons of my life, it can have its really calm moments, but it can have its really rough moments, but it's always under the sun. And um, I just thought that was a really fun thing that the Lord was talking to me about. If you think about the season of spring, it's about fullness of life, new things. Um, it's about tilling the ground, getting ready to plant things. Um, and the Lord just said, Danielle, if you're in that spring season, you can't um, you can't discount small things. Everything has a small beginnings at, at, at the first, and you've got to really wait and be patient in the spring season of your life. And then in summer, summer is really, you get the benefit of reaping all the hard work of the spring of really planting. Um, the thing about summer though, is even though you're harvesting and it's a lot of hard work, it can be really dry. It can be really dry season. And that's important to really wash yourself with the word of God and make sure that you're being watered um, in his presence, with his word, with others, and that you don't become dry. You don't become exhausted in the harvest time of summer. Um, the fall, the fall is one of my favorite times, even though in Texas, we really, our fall is more like winter. Um, fall is about storing up 
the goodness of God and getting ready for winter. And if you think about it, it's really holding on to those words um, that the Lord has given you in your fall season. And those can be prophetic words, and those can be scriptures that the Lord has spoken to you. And that's kind of a fun time for me personally, and I think it's the season I'm in, is to go back and remember the words that the Lord has spoken over my life and to go back and um, read those again and remember His faithfulness and feed on His faithfulness. And so fall is a time of storing things up, filling yourself, and getting prepared for a winter season. And winter, um, you know, there's not a lot of things that go on in the winter, but there is a lot of activity. If you think about winter um, and what's happening in nature, the snow is blanketing the ground, but there's still life and still activity under the surface, although you don't see it. Um, it's a very quiet and still place. It's a place to get re rest and um, refreshed. Um, and so it can be sometimes lonely. And so if you're in your winter season of life, I would encourage you to um, be ready for what the Lord's doing. Be aware that there's still things that are happening under the surface, although you don't, you may not see it. But to surround yourself with people that can encourage those things that are deep inside of you to grow. And I just want to encourage you that all the different seasons have so much good in them. You know, I think a lot of times in the past, I'm just like, if I can just get through this season, if I can just, just muscle through this season and get on to the next season, it's going to be better. Well, each season has its great benefits, but it also has its challenges. And my thought is is to be steadfast in those seasons. And how do you, how are you steadfast? Well, knowing who you are is everything. Knowing your identity in Christ is everything because your identity doesn't change based on season. The seasons change, but your identity never change. Your identity is knowing who you are, and it prepares your heart to be able to love others. Matthew 22 says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. You have to love yourself before you can love your neighbor. And if you can't love yourself and who God has created you in your identity, then it makes it really hard to be able to love and to thrive in every season that you're in. I love the scripture that Jesus talks to his disciples about in Matthew 16. It says, he asks the disciples in this scene, he says, you know, who do people say that I am? I mean, Jesus wanted to know how are people seeing his identity? Who are, how are they receiving him? And, you know, the disciples say, you know, you know, you're Elijah, you're maybe John the Baptist, you know, you're Jeremiah. And Jesus says, well, you know, I really don't care about what other people say that I am. I want to know who you say that I am. And then that's when Peter responds and says, you're the Christ, the son of the living God. And he said, Jesus makes such a cool space here. He says, and remark, he says, flesh and blood did not reveal that to you, but God did. And so I want to bring this point you need to have time with God to discover your identity. Because if you have your identity, you can go through any season of life and thrive. So take the time, because flesh and blood would love to reveal your identity and say, you are this or you are that, or I saw you do this or I saw you that, and label you. But you really got to get time with the Lord and allow Him to reveal your identity so you can thrive in every season. The definition of to know is to learn to know, find out, and discern, or to know by experience. You have to do the hard work of discovering identity, identity and discover who you are and to learn about how God has created you so you can thrive in every season. The equipment for each season of life. Ephesians 6 is it. It talks about how the armor of God is the equipment that God has given each and every one of us to walk through every season of life and to conquer and win and not be exhausted and not be worn out by the journey of life. I love the scripture where it talks about in 2 Timothy 2.4, it says, preach the word, be prepared in season and out of season. So you have to know God's word. Second Timothy says that. You have to be prepared. And a lot of times in my own personal life, I, 
I just let the seasons just happen. I just let life happen. I don't operate in my identity. I don't dig and discover more of who the Lord has created me to be. And I am not prepared. And I'm not prepared with the armor of God. And so I go in that season and I come out of that season and I'm just battle scarred and just worn out and exhausted. But 2 Timothy says, be prepared, preach the word of God, and be prepared in and out of season. That's a charge to us to be ready. Ephesians 6 is so important for you to be able to stand and to stand firm in that season to recognize what the Lord is speaking to you about in the season, whether it's a spring, summer, fall, or winter season. And then taking the time to discover your identity, writing down your words, and maybe dreams that the Lord has given you. Take some time to write those in your journal. Um, and where are you sharing those things? Who are you sharing those with? You know, if you think about the seasons of life where I have grown so much, it's not only am I spending time with the Lord, but I'm also sharing what He's doing with me personally to others. And I'm taking time to journal those things that he's saying because I'm going to need those words and those prophetic um, insights in the future. And so take the time in each season of your life to record what the Lord is saying and doing because you're going to feed on those things. And then who are you walking with? You know, in every season of life, you want to challenge yourself, like, who am I walking with that I'm allowing to speak to me, um, that I, the Lord has positioned them to encourage me, to walk with me in this season of life? So, you know, sometimes I, I get really inward focused, but I got to kind of look around and see, okay, who's standing next to me that is walking with me in this season that we can exchange and love and encourage and and equip. I'm going to leave this word of encouragement with you. Um, go and discover who you are in Christ. Discover your name. Discover what He says about you. Second thing is, ask the Lord what season you're in, and really discover what that looks like. And third, take a mo moment just to write and record and look for how you can contribute and share what season you're in with someone around you and give life and hope to them. And God's promises are real. And I want to read Galatians 6, 7 and end with this. It says, verse 7, Don't be misled. No one makes a fool of God. What a person plants, he will harvest. Man, that's a good promise. The person who plants selfishness ignoring the needs of others, ignoring even God, will harvest a, a crop of weeds. All he will have to show for his life is weeds. Mm. But the one who plants in response to God, letting God's Spirit do the growth work in him, will harvest a crop of real life, eternal life. So let's not allow ourselves to get fatigued doing good. At the right time, we will harvest a good crop if we don't give up or quit. Right now, therefore, every time we get a chance, let us work for the benefit of all, starting with the people closest to us in the community of faith. Be blessed.